As we begin today's meditation, let's quiet our hearts and minds before the Lord. O Lord, God of my salvation, every day I call upon you. In the morning, my prayer comes before you. Incline your ear to my cry, for my soul is full of troubles and my strength fails. Renew me each morning with your steadfast love, that I may rejoice and be glad all my days. A prayer of confession. Heavenly Father, I enter this day full of thanksgiving because you have redeemed my life by your mercy and grace. I worship you for such a great salvation, even as I come to you in repentance. Hear my confession, Father. Forgive me for under-believing your gospel and over-believing my worries. Forgive me for being slow to listen, quick to judgment. Forgive me for failing to love you and your church. Have mercy on me, Lord, for Jesus' sake. Amen. The word of the Lord from the Old Testament, Ecclesiastes 10. Dead flies make the perfumer's ointment give off a stench. So a little folly outweighs wisdom and honor. A wise man's heart inclines him to the right, but a fool's heart to the left. Even when the fool walks on the road, he lacks sense, and he says to everyone that he is a fool. If the anger of the ruler rises against you, do not leave your place, for calmness will lay great offenses to rest. There is an evil that I have seen under the sun, as it were an error proceeding from the ruler. Folly is set in many high places, and the rich sit in a low place. I have seen slaves on horses, and princes walking on the ground like slaves. He who digs a pit will fall into it, and a serpent will bite him who breaks through a wall. He who quarries stones is hurt by them, and he who splits logs is endangered by them. If the iron is blunt and one does not sharpen the edge, he must use more strength. But wisdom helps one to succeed. If the serpent bites before it is charmed, there is no advantage to the charmer. The words of a wise man's mouth win him favor, but the lips of a fool consume him. The beginning of the words of his mouth is foolishness, and the end of his talk is evil madness. A fool multiplies words, though no man knows what is to be, and who can tell him what will be after him. The toil of a fool wearies him, for he does not know the way to the city. Woe to you, O land, when your king is a child, and your princes feast in the morning. Happy are you, O land, when your king is the son of the nobility, and your princes feast at the proper time for strength and not for drunkenness. Through sloth the roof sinks in, and through indolence the house leaks. Bread is made for laughter, and wine gladdens life, and money answers everything. Even in your thoughts do not curse the king, nor in your bedroom curse the rich. For a bird of the air will carry your voice, or some winged creature tell the matter. And now we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord from the New Testament. John 15, 1 through 17. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, 
just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. A prayer of adoration. Christ Jesus, I adore you as the vine in whom I have life and bear fruit. Apart from you, I can do nothing. Thank you that as the Father has loved you, you have loved me. The word of the Lord from Psalm 43. Vindicate me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. From the deceitful and unjust man deliver me. For you are the God in whom I take refuge. Why have you rejected me? Why do I go about mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. And I will praise you with the lyre, O God. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. I thank you, Lord, for this prayer which speaks hope to the downcast. Perhaps my own soul is downcast today. And even if I am not, I know those who are. So I ask you today to send out your light and your truth. The truth is you look at your children with love, regardless of whether we feel acceptable to you. Because in Christ, we are clean, whole, and welcome. Your loving kindness is deeper than the turmoil within us. Even our discouragement can't separate us from your love. Even our mourning can't dim the light of your presence. So today, I say with the psalmist, why are you downcast, O my soul? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him. For myself and for all your people who are downcast, bring us to your altar and remind us that you are our exceeding joy. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and always until the day of Christ's return.